When a guy that's sweet, a guy that's tough, a feminist that likes to pay for stuff. A good boy, bad boy, good bad boy, half good, half bad, half boy. Hi, welcome back. This week we're making a Valentine's Day outfit so that instead of looking like the gremlin that you look like every day, you can trick people into thinking that you're the beautiful ethereal spirit that Hosier sings about. Because what is Valentine's Day here for if not for tricking people into thinking you're moderately more attractive than you are on an average day? So let's get into the making of this easy but ethereal Kalneck Valentine's Day dress. I'm going to draft a pattern off of this. Uh, I need to take a few measurements, starting with my bust, my waist, and my hip, each of which will be divided by four and give me the distance from the fold to the outer edge of the garment that I'm going to draft. The rest of it is just connecting it all. Time to commence trying to do math. My bust was a 32 inch circumference, my waist was 72 inches, and my hips were 40 inches. So divided by four, that equaled eight, 6.75, and 10 inches respectively. This pattern is gonna be cut on the fold, so we really only need to make half of the front, and it'll be perfectly symmetrical when we cut it on the fold. Make a straight line at the top of the pattern. I made mine about 12 centimeters. This is just showing us where the shoulders are. And from there, you're going to measure down to your bust. For me, that was about 9 inches. Then you'll mark a line there to show where the bust line is going to be. Next, you'll want to measure from your shoulder to your waist and then mark that onto the pattern. So measure down from that top line to wherever your waist measurement is. Then you'll draw a line straight in where your waist is. From the shoulder to the bust, I went for 9 because that's about where mine fell. And then from here, you go from the shoulder to the waist that for me was 15 total, and now we're gonna go from the waist to the hip, and that will be this next measurement. And then I will draw a line in from my hip measurement, which a quarter of my hip circumference is 10 inches. My hips don't lie, they're just big. So my hips are 23 inches from my shoulder, so I'm going to go 10 inches in at that point. And then we'll connect that. I'll round everything, and then the remainder is just from your hips to however far down you want the dress to hit. In the meantime, please enjoy this content of my cat. Hey bud! Are you a little gremlin? And then you come up three and a half inches from the bust line, and then across there you're gonna make a line where the cow neck is gonna begin. We're gonna add in the cow bike, extending it out along the line we made about three and a half inches up. That's gonna go out 19 centimeters to give us a bit of curve. And then you'll take that down to your waist. So the square here will become the cowl neck. I'm gonna go in with a black marker to mark out what I wanna keep. And I think I might even extend this a bit further for a bit more of a dramatic cowl. So to understand this, you have to know that there's something called a selvage, which is the two sides of your fabric. Along the selvage, you have the straight grain, and then the cross grain goes directly across it. That's pretty stiff, and this is pretty stiff. It doesn't move very much, but you have a bias as well, which is a 45 degree angle, and that has a ton of stretch, even if it's not a stretchy fabric. And we want this cowl neck dress to be stretchy, so we need to cut it on the bias. To do that, you take your piece of fabric, and you fold it at a 45 degree angle and it'll be really stretchy. So we put our pattern here and then cut. This is folded on the bias. This is going to go on the edge and this will come down to the waist so that there will be a lining for the bodice. Tuck this folded in half. If it wasn't totally clear, folding on the bias turns the fabric into a sort of diamond shape. So I took the top diamond portion and folded it down over the top of the bodice so there would be a lining for the bodice. Now we're cutting out the two back pieces. These are stacked on top of each other. We're gonna sew up the back seam into the zip in. It was so stretchy, I didn't actually need a zip, so in the end, I could have just cut that on the fold and saved myself a seam. The cow part of this is folded just above the waist because I want it back to come up a little high, and then I'm just going to cut around this. Next, I cut out the spaghetti straps because the selvage edge was the longest continuous piece I had. I decided to cut from that and I made the straps about two inches wide because I would fold them in half and sew them together. That might've been a little bit too much, but it worked out. 
I made them as long as possible because I was winging it. You could also measure the distance from your shoulder to where you want it to hit on your back and use that as a guide for how long you need to make them. Then it was time to sew up the spaghetti straps. Since I don't have a loop turner to easily flip them inside out, I stitched in a piece of yarn that I would use to turn it later. Basically, you stitch it close at the tip, and then using your zipper foot, or very carefully using your regular foot, fold this in half with a string in the middle to turn it. If you have a loop turner, you can skip that. And I'm just gonna do a straight stitch down. Now I'm gonna turn it right side out. All you have to do is carefully take the tail of the yarn and pull it through until the spaghetti strap flips inside out. So I've stitched up the side back and center back seam, and I have one more side back seam to stitch up, and then we will get on to placing everything. I've done an overcasting stitch on the interior edge of the bodice. You can also serge it if you have a serger, you can do a rolled hem, you just need to finish this edge in some way. And on the side, as I sewed up the side seam, I had this folded in to the inside of the dress so the right sides are together, and then this will then be flipped inside out. So I had this right sides together, started at the top and sewed all the way down the top and the side seam. And I have the end of my straps in there, so that was sewed in as well. This will get sewn into the facing on the back last. And I'm gonna do it on this side now too. What I didn't realize at this point is that you should also leave the section of the inside of the bodice that overlaps where you're gonna put the facing free, which is usually about an inch or two inches, because then once you put the facing in, you will stitch over that final part and connect all three of them. You'll see it a little bit clearer later on. I think Julian tried to warn me, but I didn't listen. Before I stitched the side seam, I, I placed the folded end of the spaghetti strap in the corner and pinned it in place so it wouldn't shift while I was sewing. Then I stitched up the side seams. I had a great idea in my head for how to do intricate back straps, but after working on it for a while and then sewing it in place, I realized it wasn't going to work. I just ripped out the straps because they were bunching too much in the middle. So instead I have one going down here, and then I have these looped over and under each other. So it's more evenly distributed along here. So I'm going to sew that back up and um, do all the finishing on this bad boy. It's a little hard to describe how the facing works, but essentially it's a lot of sandwiches. You're going to sandwich the very end of the spaghetti straps together in between the facing and the back panel. Then once that's sewn, you will sandwich the facing and back panel in between the flap you left free of the inside of the bodice and the outside of the bodice sides of both of the fabrics and put them together. Make sure that the ends of the spaghetti straps are sandwiched in between the facing and the back panel of the dress. You'll have to probably pin them in place down here in between the two layers to make sure that you'll be able to sew over it. Once I sewed all of that up, I took the top of the facing and sewed it to the seam allowance on the inside so that it would keep the facing neatly tucked into the dress when it's being worn. I also did a rolled hem to finish off the bottom of the facing on the inside. And earlier when I talked about leaving a couple inches free, this is what I was talking about. Then I sewed up the back, making sure to go back and forth a couple of times over each of the spaghetti straps for extra strength. There's the facing. Now we're gonna flip this up and stitch all the way through that. I did an overcasting stitch along all the seam allowances so this would hold it better in the washing machine. You could also use a zigzag stitch to achieve the same effect. I'm going to use a rolled hem foot, a smaller one than this, but basically the fabric feeds in and wraps around to create a nice rolled hem and then this is the foot that goes on the machine and it'll stitch through here after this is all perfectly rolled and we're gonna go ahead and hem the bottom. So I've got my rolled hem foot set up. I find it's kind of easiest if you ahead of time pre-roll it and make sure that it's staying in the feeder roller as you're sewing and make sure that your needle and stitch is set so that it's hitting towards the top 
top edge of the roll so that it's keeping it all in there and it'll be nice and even. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch all the way around this hem. Then I just sewed around the hem, occasionally clipping the seam allowances to make it go through the rolled hem foot a little bit easier. I didn't mention it earlier, but I got this fabric for $3 at a Goodwill, so this is a pretty good way to be a cheap but fabulous date this Valentine's Day. Or, you know, whenever. Wear it to the store when you buy half-off Valentine's Day chocolate like I probably will because, let's be honest, half-off Valentine's Day chocolate is way better than Valentine's Day itself. I hope you look fierce and fabulous in your DIY cow neck dress. Be the ethereal creature that Hosier would sing about much for watching. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe because I'll be getting into future shenanigans of the DIY and sewing varieties. And in the meantime, keep making.